Jelen a Sixteen Medical Student Infusional Oakland, and also the Scientific Coordinator of the Student Scientific Circle of Neurology and Neurosurgery from our town. Uh, I would like to start by saying that my mentor, Professor Stefan Florian, was initially supposed to be uh, delivering this talk here today, but when he had a medical transport, unfortunately, he had declined an invitation because he's currently at a conference in South Korea. However, he sends you his congratulations for organizing this event and uh, has asked me to deliver this talk on his behalf. Uh, all the conclusions, all the points of view that I'm going to present derive from his experience. I would also like to thank my colleagues Vlad and Adrian for their help. The topic of petroplagal meningiomas is controversial from many points of view. How to treat these lesions? Simply observe them because many of them have minimal symptomatology. To apply radio surgery in order to stabilize the tumor or to operate on them. But how? Which approach to use? How radical should the surgeon be? In addition, today's patients are becoming more and more informed and they want not only to have the tumor taken out, but to have a quality of life at least comparable with the preoperative one. Ventricular meningiomas are regarded by most experienced neurosurgeons as probably the most difficult tumor to be treated by microsurgery. What is the meaning of benign? Can we call these lesions benign? They tend to be slow growing, but in this way they reach large volumes and uh, begin to compress the brainstem and the surrounding neurovascular structures, and if left untreated because of this, may eventually kill the patient. They have a rich blood supply, and the delineation from the brainstem is sometimes lacking. If the tumor invades the pia and there is no arachnoidal plane left between the brainstem and the lesion, total removal of the lesion cannot happen without serious consequences for the patient. The goal of total resection to leave the patient without um, post-operative complications is hard to achieve. Um, these um, meningiomas may extend uh, to the cavernous sinus, to the middle fossa, they can extend on the whole length of the fibers from the front of the to the cellar region. Uh, if their consistency is soft, they are easily aspirable, but sometimes their consistency is hard, making the removal more difficult. Also, uh, lesions in this area are very rare. They account for at least uh, for less than 1% of the total <coughs> number of meningiomas, which means that even in high volume centers, the lack of experience is a problem. Dr. Volovich is going to present the anatomy in detail, so I'm uh, just going to highlight the structures that we can find in this region, the brain stem, the cranial nerves, and the branches of the base of the trunk. The petrolival region is not a specific anatomic zone. It's more of a surgical entity than an anatomical one. That is why in the literature we can encounter many classifications. I'm only going to tell you about a few of them. The first to classify, to attempt to classify these regions was Ruggiero in the 1950s. The father of modern neurosurgery, Yashagil, divided these meningiomas into clival, petroclival, stenopetroclival, from and cerebral triangle ones. Aseka, um, imagine the more simple classification. He divided the clivus into three portions and said that petroclival meningiomas are the ones that extend on the upper two thirds of the clivus and on the petrous bone anterior to the, interior, to the internal acoustic canal. According to Almeth, the true petroclival meningiomas are the ones that are on the upper two thirds of the clivus and medial to the fifth nerve. According to Sekhar's classification, our main author has an experience of 41 petroclival meningioma patients treated in the last 13 years. <coughs> if a mere 60 years ago these lesions were considered inoperable, since then many uh, approaches were developed to bring the surgeon closer to the lesion and to decrease patient morbidity. Uh, there are three main categories of approaches to reach this lesion. The transpatial approaches, which have very limited indications that we're not, not going to discuss it today. The petrosal approaches and the retrosigmoid approach. The choice of approach is, in generally speaking, mainly dictated by the main tumor mass, the extension, and certain native preference of the surgeon. Spessler, Pambadikis, Tao have all proposed that approaches tailored to the tumor's the tumor, main tumor mass and extension. Tao and Thor has also proposed a standardization of approaches according to the um, 
tumor extension, number of anatomical compartments involved, but it is really difficult to standardize living people. Uh, about, in case of control cell approaches, the general principles of preserving the arachnoid plate, progressive developing and piecemeal removal apply. And as with other roots, complete removal is not always possible, sometimes due to the nature of the disease. The posterior petrosal approaches are mainly used for tumors located mostly in the posterior fossa, while the anterior petrosal approaches are widely used, and their main characteristic and advantage is that the surgeon is coming to the lesion from above. This means an easier preserva preservation of the neurovascular structures surrounding the tumor. These approaches also provide the surgeon with a shorter distance to the lesion, uh, they offer uh, the possibility of early tumor devascularization and uh, significant easier access to the middle fossa. On the other, time, on the other hand, these approaches are time consuming. They require extensive drilling of the creature's bone with its possible consequences and also high rates of CSF fistula as were reported with these approaches. With this uh, table, I only want to highlight that even today, in the era of modern scalding surgery, the percentage of gross total removal uh, in the recent series still remains low, while the patient morbidity still remains quite high. Uh, Zypher divides the history of petroplasma meningioma surgery into three periods. The first period, up until the 1990s, was characterized by very poor surgical results. The second period, the golden age, was the advent of the complex skull based approaches in, in an effort to reduce patient morbidity. The third period, which is still going on, is becoming more and more focused on a patient oriented approach, on trying to custom tailor the best approach for each patient. Sami supports the uh, use of a simple retrosigmoid approach, and he adds that additionally, during this approach, to gain more access over the tumor, the features apex may be resected intradurally. This is Sami's approach, and please keep it in mind because I'm going to show you a film uh, of Professor Florian when he uses this technique. Now, our series of 41 patients is currently under analysis, so I can present you extensive results of the case series, but I would like to uh, present you two cases which illustrate our main author's philosophy, main, namely that uh, when possible, uh, these tumors should be treated by a retrosigmoid approach in a sitting position. This patient uh, was, uh, I hope the video is working, it, it's not. Okay, so this patient was with petroplasma, I will show the video at the end. Uh, the patient was uh, admitted to petroplasma meningioma, compressing the brainstem on both uh, on three levels, and of course, gross total resection was achieved. Um, I would like to show you the video now, and then we'll skip the next one. I, I would like to illustrate uh, the technique. It's really not wanting to work. Okay, this is again the meticulous removal. 
that part of the tumor is moving. Now it's moving more medially. If you think simplistically, this tumor is divided into three uh, different holes where it's going to be on the instrument. Thank you very much. 